Hey there, welcome to another Raspberry Pi tutorial part of easyprogramming.net. It's been a few months since my last Raspberry Pi tutorial, but I finally settled and I've come to you with a brand new giveaway. If you've entered in the past, you know the rules. If you haven't, read the rules in the description below and go to easyprogramming.net for more information. I'll be giving away two Raspberry Pi Zero Ws and they'll be announced in the next video, so stay tuned. In today's tutorial, I want to give you a quick overview of how to turn your Raspberry Pi into your personal VPN using Pi VPN. I'll also talk about how to change your DNS so that you can change so that you can route all traffic through Pi-hole and have access to network level ad blocking on the go. So let's get started. There are a lot of good materials online about Pi VPN, including PiVPN.io. So I won't spend too much time on the setup and just talk about the configuration later on. But to just to go through the installation, we'll do this command, which is found on Pi VPN, and it takes uh, a minute or so to install um, everything. And with the magic of video editing, uh, we have gone through the installation and or through the prerequisite installations and we've come to the Pi VPN automated installer. So let's just go through these, let's just step through these and see what these say. So it does t warn you that you need a static IP address um, because every time your IP address changes, you'll need to change the configurations. And if you have a dynamic IP address like me, it's, it can get really annoying. So I do recommend uh, if you don't have a static IP address, just use a domain name and I'll show you where in the configurations uh, to edit that later on. And it tells you, do you want to use your current network uh, settings as a static IP address? Uh, this is our internal static IP address, and yes, it'll be 192.168.1.192. Um, it's a neat uh, IP address for a Pi VPN, if you ask me. Say yes. Um, there may be an IP conflict, sure. Uh, choose local user. We only have one user on the Raspberry Pi, which is the user Pi. Um, do we want unintended upgrades? Yes, I do. It's for uh, security purposes so that it installs security updates when they come out rather than waiting for you to do it if you're not around for a month. You can leave your whole network uh, vulnerable. Next, it asks you about which protocol you want to use. If you don't know uh, what you're doing, just select UDP as selected here. By default, it tells you to open port 1194. You can change this to any port you want. On the actual VPN that I use at home, not uh, for the demo purposes, I use another completely random uh, port number uh, that I've chosen. But for the purposes of this video, I'll stick to 1194. Confirmation. And it asks you what kind of certificate do you want to create. Uh, they recommend you know, at least 256, but if you're paranoid, you can go all the way up to 521 bits. Um, press OK and this part can take a couple of minutes depending on uh, which option you chose as it creates these certificates for you, um, assigns them and, and does the Pi VPN magic behind the scenes. Um, and that was fast for me because I've done this uh, on this Pi before uh, as practice. The next it asks you do you want to use a, a public IP address? You, you know this is my external IP address. If you can't see it it's because I, I, I've blurred it out in the video because I even though I have a dynamic IP address, I don't restart my router that often, so I get a new IP address every uh, month or so. Uh, but for now, it's this IP address. You can also choose a DNS entry, but I won't do that. I'll show you how to where in the default configurations to change to change into a do uh, domain name later on. So we'll do yes. IP address and it asks you which VPN clients do you want to use. Um, by default, it'll choose Google. Uh, I think there's a bug with Pi VPN at this moment where uh, when I've gone through this practice setup and I've done custom and I've targeted my uh, Pi hole, it didn't really work. So I'll just keep Google for now, which is going to be 8.8.8.8.8.4.4. .8 .8 .8 .8 .8 um, do you want to add just blah blah blah? And it asks you, like, you know, do you want to use your domain? So one thing I've noticed is that if I do vpn.easyprogramming.net, if I use a subdomain, it says the domain is invalid. Please try again. So if you run into this, you know, the workaround is to just give it the root level, and then we'll change it later on. So we'll do easyprogramming.net. Yeah, sure. And let it do the rest of the installation for us. There you go, installation is complete. Now you can uh, do Pi VPN add and Pi VPN help for more information. So we'll do OK. And it asks you, do you want to reboot? So yes, I do want to reboot. Let it reboot. System will not reboot. It'll kick me off and we'll 
be right back to the magic of video editing. And we're back and PyVPN should be installed now. So we're going to change some of our configurations. Um, first, let's uh, change our uh, domain name in our uh, in the default configurations for uh, our Pi VPN, so we'll just go. Let's go to CDTC, Open VPN, uh, Easy RSA. Take a look here. There should be a folder called um, PKI. Uh, you know, for some reason, uh, even though I have access to this, it doesn't let me go into PKI. So uh, one trick I do is I'll just do um, sudo chown, chown, uh, pi pi pki and then now if i do you know stat pki you'll see that you know the user that owns it is pi and so it's a group so i can now go into pki and now if i do list i can see that there is a default.txt i'll just clear this and do list again default.txt and that's what we will edit so we'll do so we'll do sudo nano default.txt um and i've already edited this so that i don't have to um edit this out in the video uh, but what I did was I removed my public IP address which was here and replaced it with my domain name vpn.easyprogramming.net which where I've set up an A record at, with my DNS host and pointed it to my external IP address so now whenever my do my IP address changes all I have to do is change that A record um, wait 15 to 30 minutes for the cache to clear and then now I can connect back to my VPN I don't have to touch my VPN uh, my Pi VPN settings after this. So, you know, you can save this. And the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we send all of our traffic through Pi Hole. So let's go to um, Open VPN. There should be a, yep, server.conf file. So the sudo nano server.com configuration. And if we scroll down, there you go. This is our domain, easyprogramming.net. I'll just change it to VPN. And we can see our Google DNS is here. So I'll just change it to my Pi-hole VPN, which is 192.168.1.195, which is my primary. And I have a backup, 192.168.1.195. Uh, you can use the IP address of your current Pi VPN if you're using Pi-hole on the same VPN. Um, unlike me, where I'm actually using three different Raspberry Pi 0Ws for all three of them. Um, my first Pi hole here, if you've seen my tutorial on how to set up Pi hole, is that it's on a Ethernet adapter. So yeah, pretty cool. So we'll do this, and don't think there's anything else to do here, I'll do it, etc. And then for prosperity's sake, you can do service um, uh, open VPN uh, restart. And we'll restart the open VPN service. And now we're ready. We'll do CD, go back to the home, and we'll see that there's an old VPNS um, folder here. So we'll go to CD, O. There's nothing here now. Now we can do pi add, pi VPN add. Let's just do H and see what options we have available. So we have add, clients, debug, list, revoke, help, uninstall, etc. So let's do pi VPN A. Um, you can give a password, or if you don't, you don't have to give a password. So you can just type in no pass, and it'll ask you enter a name for a client. So we'll do um, easy programming one. How many days do you want? It says 1080. I'll just do 10 for now, uh, because again, this is for demo purposes. And if we do list, you'll see it says easy programming one .ovpns. and we can see what the content of this is. Um, you'll see that the remote domain name here is listed as my domain name instead of my IP address. So I can just give this to whoever I want to have access to my VPN uh, and they'll be able to connect to it as long as the A record or the or whatever DNS record you're using is set up correctly. Even though the DNS servers for our Pi holes isn't listed here, through our server.configuration file in the open VPN um, settings that we edited about a minute ago, uh, OpenVPN will push all traffic through our custom VPN, our custom DNS servers. So now that we have this, what we want to do is we want to export uh, this and import it into uh, a computer. You can do this using uh, your favorite uh, FTP client. I will use FileZilla. I have my, I'm just doing a quick FileZilla here. Uh, connect, there we go, we have Pi. So actually, what directory is this? Actually, just do you know pwd, you know, pi open vpn, right? 
but I'll get to figure that out. And here we have this here. Uh, and I am in my USB drive here, which I will then use to put into my surface, which will connect to my uh, hotspot. So let's do that now. Okay, so I am uh, logged on to my Surface um, and I'm connected to my mobile hotspot. So you can see the uh, internet is master. If you follow me on GitHub, you'll know that that's the uh, handle that I use. Um, and if you want to download the OpenVPN client, you, you don't have it, you just go to openvpn.net uh, and uh, I'll put this link in the description and on easyprogramming.net. So uh, one of the ways that I'll be able to tell that I've connected successfully to my VPN and that Pi Hole is working is that on easyprogramming.net, I do have some ads, uh, you know, not the best layout here, um, I'll fix those later, uh, is that when I'm on Pi Hole, the, these ads will get blocked uh, eventually by the client. Uh, if I want to inspect, and I'll just leave this open. Right. And then, uh, so that cache is clear, and then I will uh, connect to our VPN using the profile that I created. So um, one thing you need to know is you need to run OpenVPN with uh, administrative privileges or at least elevated privileges. Uh, otherwise, even though OpenVPN will run, uh, you won't be able to connect or, or send you won't be able to fully connect to uh, your VPN. So I'll run it as administrator. It'll ask me, like, do I want to run? But yes, I do. It says no readable connection profiles. It's because I don't have any profiles set up yet. I just installed it. Um, and when you're ready, uh, you'll see this uh, OpenVPN GUI icon on the bottom right-hand side. You can right-click it. There's no profiles here, so you can click on Import File. I put mine on my desktop, so it's called you know Easy Programming Open OpenVPN. It says File Import is uh, successfully. And now if I right-click it again, I'll see a connect. If you have multiple profiles, you'll see um, multiple names with uh, with a deeper navigation. So you can, you'll say like, you know, like either programming with an arrow, you'll see these four options here. But since I only have one, I only get one, just connect. So I'll click on connect, and if everything works successfully, I'll, it'll connect to my uh, Raspberry Pi at home, which technically is on another network. You can see that it says the assigned IP is 10.8.0.2 and this is what my uh, Pi VPN assigned to this computer. Um, if you if you right click and click on show status you can see uh, that you know it was successfully connected and you can see the bytes that were sent and bytes that were uh, received so far. And if I click on um, easyprogramming.net and if I refresh let's see what happens. It's a little bit slower because it's on my mobile network. It will be much faster if you're not on, you know, not a mobile network. So once this loads, you see that things get blocked, and you'll see that you know this ad is not working, uh, and the ad down here is not working. It's a little bit ugly, but you know, um, after a while those just disappear and uh, they don't uh, show up in the UI at all, which is nice. Um, there you go. See, no more in the UI. And if I scroll down, this is still there, but. They're usually not, uh, if, you, if you just use it successfully. Um, and one thing I didn't do earlier is if I do, you know, ping 192.168.1.192, which is my uh, internal IP address for my Pi VPN, it'll actually say, you know, like, hey, I, I can ping it. Um, and now if I disconnect from here, if I actually, let's go back to show status. Um, you'll see that I've received more, uh, more, more bytes. Um, if I disconnect from this and I try to ping my IP address again, it won't find it because I'm not on that network. So let's reconnect, let's see how quickly it connects. If you can connect before this, these requests finish four times. On time now, but if I do it again, there you go. I'm back on the network. But you'll see that the the latency is pretty high, 232, as opposed to um, something else. So let's go back to my desktop and see uh, see our connection. So then now that we have successfully connected, we can take a look at our our clients that are actually connected. So if if you don't know the commands, you can do pi v VPN uh, H for a list of the commands again. You'll see that there, you know, there are two uh, pretty useful ones here, which is list and clients. I'll do pi VPN list, which will just show me uh, all the profiles that I have. It won't show me connection status. It'll just say, you know, like easy programming one, that's one of them. Uh, and this one, this is valid for this, um, for this uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, now if I do, let's move this up a little bit. 
we'll do pi vpn c it'll show me all the clients that are currently connected um if i do this let's look at a little bit better formatted and it'll say you know easy programming one um this is the ip address that's the remote IP address, this is assigned by my mobile hotspot. I mean, I won't hide this because uh, this changes every time I turn my uh, hotspot on and off. This is the virtual IP address that PyVPN assigned my Chrome, uh, sorry, my Chromebook, my uh, Surface Pro. Um, and these are the bytes that have been received and sent so far. And it has been connected since uh, October 2nd, 3.08 a.m. Uh, the timing is obviously wrong, so I think uh, it's just the time zone of my Pi VPN. Uh, since this isn't my normal Pi VPN, I don't, I don't really care about the time. Uh, and the one thing that I didn't show you is uh, port forwarding. So we opened up 1194 on my router. The re only reason I didn't show that to you is because there are really probably thousands of different types of routers out there. I have a quantum Fios. You can Google how to port forward on you based on your your router make and model. Uh, you can also go to portforward.com. They have some good uh, information here on how to uh, port forward and uh, just find your router. And if you have any questions, do ask uh, about port forwarding. I I'm more than happy to help. Just give me your router make and model and I'll see what I can do to help you. And I hope you've learned something new today or you know learned a little bit more uh, than before. You've learned how to install PyVPN, how to install PyVPN and connect it to PyHole and connect successfully from a remote uh, computer. Um, remember to enter the giveaway. I'll be announcing the two winners uh, in the next video. Um, so feel free to come back and check that out and see if you've won. Uh, this will be Pi number 17 and 18, I believe, that I've given away so far. Um, well, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great one. Subscribe and come back for the next video.